We mentioned advanced DNA technology in that conversation with Helen, uh, a loved one. Her mom was murdered back in 1983. It was this past weekend. Her case passed 40 years cold. Othram is the first of its kind lab in the world, purposely, purposefully built to identify perpetrators or victims from crime scenes. Kristen Middleman is Chief Development Officer at Othram. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank you for having me. It's a typical Monday, right? It is. <laughs> uh, Mondays, you gotta love them, but we all hate them. Um, okay, so let's talk about your technology. What is the, the technology at Othram? Tell us all about it. So we have created a method called forensic grade genome sequencing, and we're the first lab in the world to actually create this technology. There's, you've heard of whole genome sequencing yes. that's been used in medicine, that's been used in consumer genomics. So a lot of us at Othram were part of the group that helped develop those sequencing methods for medicine to make life or death decisions. But what we realized a few years back is people were using our medical assays to actually run forensic evidence mm. and help identify someone. Unfortunately, those medical assays are built for fresh DNA. When you go to the doctor and you give blood, blood draw. Yeah, yeah, it's single source, mm -hmm. it's fresh, it's a lot of DNA, it's renewable. That's the exact opposite of forensic DNA. If we talk about the crime scene you're talking about today, there'll be very little DNA. Mm -hmm. It'll be degraded because mm -hmm. it's 40 years old. Trace amounts. It'll possibly. be contaminated yeah. with other DNA that was at the crime scene as well. And it'll be treated um, very, very differently. And so what we did is we, pil we built a process that would allow you to look at that type of intractable DNA. And it build a profile, a DNA profile, that has hundreds and hundreds of thousands of markers. When you take those markers, you can actually upload them to genealogical databases consented for law enforcement use and get really distant relatives. So you can get a sixth cousin here, right. and a fifth cousin here, and a fourth cousin here. And that allows you to actually be able to identify where either the perpetrator or the victim from a crime scene um, belong in a family tree. You give that investigative lead back to law enforcement, and then law enforcement contextualizes that within mm -hmm. their investigation. And so if it's a perpetrator, they will actually make sure that the person might have owned the gun that was used right. in the crime scene, might have been in the area, might have known the victim, whatever it is that they need to get a warrant for their DNA. Then they get a warrant for their DNA, and they confirm the result using standard DNA testing, forensic DNA testing that has been used in the US for 30 years, CODIS testing. And once that's confirmed, then we can go ahead and go to trial and get justice. Yeah. It's all about connecting the dots. It's a puzzle and putting that puzzle together. Exactly. Why was Othram developed? Because there were so many cold cases out there and in the contemporary cases that had evidence that would have been intractable otherwise. And so we truly believe that it's only justice if it can be given to everyone. And not only one or two or three cold right. cases being solved here or there, but truly every case being solved with this technology. And we truly believe that this is the beginning of a movement that will bring cold cases to extinction and allow people to get caught the first time they commit a crime, bring serial crime to extinction and make this world a safer and more just world for all of us. In one of our previous conversations, it might have been earlier this year, I was inspired when you said that you predict with this technology within 10 years, if evidence exists, there will be no more cold cases. I do. I, I, we are now working with the federal government and creating the avenues that are necessary, the funding that is necessary, the parameters that are necessary for this technology to be given to everyone. So hopefully soon, Othram won't be the only lab running this technology. It'll be given to state labs, it'll be given to other laboratories so that everyone can solve these cases the first time. Can you talk about cases that Othram has helped solve? There's so many. Carla Walker comes into mind that the Texas. It's a Texas case. Yeah, Texas, she was a 17 year old cheerleader. It was a 46 year old case at the time that we had gotten the case. Um, she had been brutally uh, abducted, beaten, raped, and murdered, and left in a culvert three days later, is when she was found. For 46 years, um, 
there was doubt that maybe uh, her boyfriend at the time, Rodney, had something to do with the crime. He didn't. Mm -hmm. um, he lived a very difficult life where he because had to deal that. with that suspicion yeah. and that doubt. Um, I met her family. Her brother lived in the same house, hoping someone would knock on the door and let him know what might have happened to answers, his sister because yeah. he needed those answers so much. Um, and it turns out that Glenn McCurley was the perpetrator for Carla Walker. We were able to identify him and he did go to court and he was sentenced to life in prison. And so finally her family was able to face him and get answers and get justice for their sister. You know, this is so emotional for so many people. You show up and, you know, they, they put so much hope and faith into the work that you do. Uh, you know, talking with um, Helen just moments ago, her sister previously, Sarah, about her, about their mother's case, you know, on Saturday, it marked 40 years without answers. When we see your technology, this technology solving high profile cases across the country, even the world, why is it not being used here locally? There's a lot of reasons for that, but it needs to become a tool that law enforcement trusts. Yeah. And that takes education, that takes time for them to see that this is predictable, that this is robust and it works in every case. Also, there needs to be funding for it. Right now, there's not enough funding for this technology. And so that's what we're working on at the federal level, both funding and metrics to show how how accurate this technology is and how robust it is so that law enforcement can use it every time. There is no reason, and there are some high profile um, contemporary cases that we've worked as well, that when you don't get that CODIS match, that initial hit, the person isn't in that known perpetrator database, you don't immediately flip the case to this type of technology, forensic grade genome sequencing, so that you can get the answer, get the perpetrator off the street right away, right. prevent that next crime from happening. I think that part of the job is so meaningful and knowing that someone's gone home today because of this technology and is gonna live a normal life and never know that they would have been the next victim of a serial killer the next victim of an yeah. attack because of this technology. But also if perpetrators realize that they'd get caught every time they committed a crime, right. whether they left, Could be a deterrent. you know, yeah, it, it will start to become a deterrent for that crime. And so I think going forward, it'll be used in contemporary investigations. So no one like Helen has to wait 40 years to find out what happened to their loved ones. It'll immediately solve. And that's how I think cold cases, I think the backlog will be cleared in time, but I think new cold cases will stop yeah. occurring yeah. over and over again because they'll be solved. Absolutely, you know, that, that work is continuing as you're talking about that, that work with lawmakers. What would be your message to the hundreds of thousands of people across the country, loved ones of victims of murders? What's your message to them who are desperately waiting for answers? Answers are coming. Do not give up hope. Write to your legislators, write to the law enforcement agents, uh, point them to this technology, show them what's possible. There are a couple hundred stories, public stories on our website as previous casework. Find one that's similar to your story and send that link. It's very easy. Every victim story is on there and, and exactly what the DNA look like. Just send that link to them and say, can my case benefit from this? It really is an education and advocacy sort of play right now until they want to use it every single time. With that, what would your message be to lawmakers and law enforcement officers? So lawmakers is help us create the, the guardrails and the infrastructure so that everyone can get justice. Justice is a basic human right. People shouldn't have to wait 40 years for that. Um, people shouldn't lose their name forever and, and remain unidentified because they were a victim of a crime and then just left somewhere, discarded somewhere without a name, without an identity. And so this technology can solve all of that. It's time to do so and help us build the infrastructure. And for, for law enforcement, you know, take a chance and use this new tool. Ask a lot of questions, figure out if they've done similar work before, whether they'll consume the evidence. We won't consume the evidence at Othram unless we're certain we can help in the investigation. We have a very stringent quality, like feasibility process prior to actually consuming a sample because we know this is someone's last chance to justice. Ask all the questions, but do use new technology. 
we're not filming on a camera from 30 years ago today. We're not talking on a phone from 30 years ago. There is no reason to not use new DNA technology. It's here and it's ready. And for agencies who own these cases and might be suspect of this new technology, it, your message to them is to also ask questions. Yeah, look at the, the statistics. Look at, the, look at how many times there's been success. What's next for Althram? We're going to disseminate this technology to everyone. It's time. And so as, as this federal um, initiatives start to come by, we're going to create the funding not only for the testing but also for state labs to be able to bring this technology in-house and be able to solve their own cases. There's going to be hundreds of authors around the country and, and this is the beginning of the end for these cold cases. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for a lot of answers. Kristen, we so much appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank I you. do appreciate it. You can rewatch this content on clicktohouston.com and you can stream more KPRC2 original content on the KPRC2 Plus app. You can binge watch episodes of The Evidence Room, uh, investigate true crime docu-series. That's our original true crime docu-series. It's all on KPRC2 Plus. All you have to do is download the free app on your iPhone or Android.